This fortnight's episode gives us a case in my home state of a clear violation of our right to defend ourselves. What's in the news with Creepy Uncle Joe and RentBoy.com? A new ANCAP app on Cell 411. And Hurting Cats, talking about the Free Coast Festival in New Hampshire. Welcome to the Lava Flow, channeling the flow of information to the libertarian, anarcho capitalist, voluntarist, and agorist community. Find us at thelavaflow.com. Here's your host, Roger Paxton. Thank you for joining me this week, coming to you from Lava HQ from the state that was the home of the Rower War Relocation Center, which had the distinction of holding Star Trek actor George Takei in its concentration camp during World War II, this is the show that will bring you the people, places, and events that everyone in the Liberty Revolution needs to know. You can catch me on Twitter at the Lava Flow Pod. This is Episode 19, the Shall Be Infringed Edition. And it's Tuesday, September 1st, 2015, when we've already had more than 780 people killed by police this year. What's wrestling my jimmies this week? You're about to find out. Let's do it to it. Since its passage in 2013, Act 746 in Arkansas has been understood by most people to allow for legal carry of firearms. This was also the intent of the legislator who introduced the bill, in his own words. However, there are many in the state who refuse to plainly read the law properly and continue to ignore the legislative intent in Act 746. Republican Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, although expressing support for open carry and saying that she does believe that Act 746 allows for open carry, had yet, at least prior to the case I'll be talking about today, to release her official opinion on the matter, which left the waters muddy and allowed overreaching police and prosecutors to do as they wish in this matter. This was the case this week in Bald Knob, Arkansas. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about Act 746 and why it's so important. The law, as amended in 2013, reads, A person commits the offense of carrying a weapon if he or she possesses a handgun, knife, or club on or about his or her person, in a vehicle occupied by him or her, or otherwise readily available for use, with a purpose to attempt to unlawfully employ the handgun, knife, or club as a weapon against a person. To the layperson, this law is extremely clear. A person only commits the offense of carrying a weapon if their purpose is to attempt to unlawfully employ it as a weapon against a person. Since self-defense is a legal use of a weapon, carrying a weapon for that purpose is not illegal in the state of Arkansas. Most prosecutors, police officers, and even the Attorney General agree with this interpretation, but there are several rogue police units and prosecutors who refuse to interpret this law correctly, including my own county sheriff. Since there are differing opinions on this law, there have been a couple of gun rights groups in the state who have taken up the challenge to test this out. They have held open carry walks and had their activists open carrying in most counties of the state essentially begging officers to arrest them. A few months ago, an activist was arrested in Cabot, Arkansas, but that case was thrown out. Back in May, another activist, Richard Chambliss was arrested and charged in Bald Knob for the offense of carrying a weapon in a McDonald's restaurant which was not posted as not allowing firearms on the property. Last Tuesday, he was found guilty of this offense by a judge and sentenced to 15 days in jail, one-year probation, and a fine of $2,160. Mr. Chambliss and his attorney do intend to appeal in order to receive a jury trial on the matter and take control out of the hands of a judge who clearly has reading comprehension issues. Now, I don't have a lot in common with the Act 746 activists except for my love of weapons, my desire to protect myself and my family, and the ability to read clearly, because these activists are big on the Constitution. My question for these activists is what has the Constitution done to stop this man from being stripped of his rights? Nothing. As the Sanders Spooner said, 
But whether the Constitution really be one thing or another, this much is certain, that it has either authorized such a government as we have had, or it has been powerless to prevent it. In either case, it is unfit to exist. Just ask Richard Chambliss or Suzette Kilo how much the government or the Constitution protected their rights. If you think you have rights because some law or some piece of paper says so, you are naive. And I have some oceanfront property to sell you in Arizona. We have rights because we are human beings. Almost, if not all, of our rights can be summed up in the right to property. And this case is no different. This man has the right to own a weapon as a piece of property. He also has the right to do with that property as he sees fit, as long as he does not cause harm to another person or their property. But more importantly in this case, this man has a right to the property of his own body and the right to protect that property. This cop, prosecutor, and judge seem to think they have the authority to remove these rights at will. I submit they do not. They may be able to interfere with that right, as they've done in this case, but they certainly cannot remove that right, no matter how much they try. Arkansas State Representative Nate Bell, a former Republican who switched to an independent in protest of the majority of Republicans who voted to move our election primary dates way back, and who self-describes as the most libertarian legislator in the Arkansas House, is standing up for Mr. Chambliss. Representative Bell went to Bald Knob carrying two handguns on his person and three in his car and posted on his Facebook page an image of where he was, daring the Bald Knob police to come arrest him. Of course, they did not. Now, I've had my run-ins with Nate Bell in the past. He accused Gary Johnson and libertarians, who he called domestic terrorists, of causing Barack Obama to win re-election in 2012 showing his clear inability to do simple math. And he has called himself a libertarian while voting for Obamacare in Arkansas in the form of the private option. However, I do support Nate Bell in this case and would love to have seen him be arrested for this to bring more light to this very important topic. Here's to hoping he will continue to try this until he is finally arrested. A couple of days after the verdict against Mr. Chambliss, Attorney General Rutledge finally did release her official opinion on Act 746, saying, quote, It is my opinion that if a person does not have the intent to attempt to unlawfully employ a handgun as a weapon against another, he or she may possess a handgun on or about his or her person, in a vehicle occupied by him or her, or otherwise readily available for use, without violating 5-73-120 as amended by Act 746. This is great news for Chambliss, and I hope that this has an impact on his appeal. My hat is off to Richard Chambliss and other rights activists who are putting their liberty on the line to bringing attention to this issue and others. They sit on the front lines where people like me, who have a family who relies on me, cannot sit and it is very much appreciated. Thank you, Richard, and keep fighting the good fight. Have you subscribed to the Lava Flow on iTunes or any mobile device yet? Then what's wrong with you? Go to thelavaflow.com slash subscribe so you don't miss a minute of the show. And while you're subscribing, make sure to leave me a five-star rating and review the show to help others find our podcast. Thelavaflow.com slash subscribe. What's in the news? The news you need to know from a libertarian perspective. In creepy Uncle Joe news, major Democratic fundraisers have been invited to meet with Vice President Joe Biden at his residence at the U.S. Naval Observatory the week after Labor Day. This is part of a series of conversations he's having with senior party players as he contemplates jumping into the 2016 race. In an election that has hilarious Clinton self-imploding and economically challenged Bernie Sanders as the only Democrat getting anywhere, this could put new breath in the race for the Democratic nomination. Many are saying that he has waited too late to gain any significant traction. I think that if more than 14 months before the general election is too late, then we have gone nuts in this country. But one more thing, is it just me, or does creepy Uncle Joe remind anyone else of a white Bill Cosby? 
In How Can You Have Any Pudding If You Don't Eat Your Meat News, Michelle Obama's federally mandated school lunches are being trashed yet again, this time literally. Since 2012, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has implemented a requirement, widely championed by First Lady Michelle Obama, that children must select either a fruit or vegetable for school lunches subsidized by the federal government. However, a new report published this week by researchers at the University of Vermont found that even though students did add more fruits and vegetables to their plate, as the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act enforces, quote, children consumed fewer fruits and vegetables and wasted more during the school year immediately following implementation of the USDA rule. I would not be surprised at all to see the next phase of this program to be a mandate forcing the children to not only add a fruit or vegetable, but also to actually eat it, with a threat of force feeding if necessary. In Practice What You Preach news, a Kentucky County clerk, Kim Davis, is asking the Supreme Court for permission to keep denying marriage licenses to same-sex couples months after the court legalized gay marriage. Davis, who opposes gay marriage for religious reasons, asked the nation's highest court on Friday to grant her, quote, asylum for her conscience. This is because she stopped issuing all marriage license and in turn was sued by two straight and two gay couples. A federal court judge ordered Davis to issue licenses and an appeals court upheld that decision. Davis said she will not resign from her $80,000 a year job and vowed that she will never license a same-sex marriage. She has turned couples away for two months in defiance of a series of court orders. No answer on whether or not she refused to issue marriage licenses to people who had previously been divorced, which would also be against her Bible. In Ripples of the Silk Road trial, authorities arrested the CEO and six other employees of RipBoy.com for allegedly running an internet brothel. They have each been charged with, quote, conspiring to violate the Travel Act by promoting prostitution. Founded in 1997, RentBoy.com is a male escort advertising site that charges subscribers a minimum monthly fee of $59.95 and up to several hundred dollars to advertise sexual services. RentBoy's Twitter account describes the company as, quote, the original and world's largest male escort site and has some 11,000 followers. The company and website did nothing to actually connect buyers and sellers. It only allowed advertising to be purchased by escorts and displayed on the site for potential buyers. No sex or any other services were purchased through this site other than the advertising. Hell, at least the Silk Road site actually put buyers and sellers together. This site did nothing of the sort. Now there have been seven arrests, the site is seized, and the government also seized $1.4 million dollars of alleged criminal proceeds from six bank accounts. Unbelievable. If convicted, the seven defendants could be sentenced up to five years in prison and fined up to $250,000 each. In only one word comes to my mind, news, 1,500 Americans were asked what was the first word to come to their mind when they thought of popular presidential candidates. The top word used to describe Donald Trump was arrogant, followed by the words blowhard, idiot, businessman, and clown. Of those surveyed, most of the people used the word liar to describe Clinton. Second was dishonest, followed closely by untrustworthy. Survey respondents most frequently said that Bush came to mind when they thought of Jeb Bush, imagine that, followed by the words family, honest, weak, and brother. The word that comes to my mind for all three of these is statist. In You Have to Be High to Support the War on Drugs news, a man in Queensland, Australia was arrested and imprisoned for four months for possession of crystal meth while police carried out forensic tests. When the test came back, and I stress four long months later, it was found to be nothing more than Epsom salt. Hell. Today, when you can get the results of a paternity test in 12 hours, why the hell does a man sit locked in a cage for four months while the government runs tests on salt? Did anyone not think to try and sprinkle some on a snail to see what it would do? 
or hell, even lick the damn thing? Give me a fucking break. Whatever happened to that old adage, guilty until proven innocent? Exercise your free market muscles by going to thelavaflow.com slash support and giving a per episode donation of as little as a buck an episode. Or use Bitcoin. Get exclusive content, rewards, and help the lava flow become fiscally neutral while providing you more content. Thelavaflow.com slash support. And cap apps. Liberty activist Virgil Vaduva has released a new app that aims to harness the network effect of cell phones to empower individuals to help one another during times of emergency to lessen dependence on government-provided emergency services. With the tap of a button, users of Cell 411 can alert their contacts or nearby users of their emergency. The app has several categories for alerts, including medical, fire, vehicle trouble, witnessing criminal activity, and I am cop blocking. The cop blocking alert will announce to the user's friends of their activity in real time and include the exact location and turn-by-turn directions to the activist's location. The makers of the app are not deterring from the fact that their creation is targeted at providing protection for people from the ongoing abuse given by authoritarian cops. This is a genius way to assist the police accountability activists in their fight for the truth and to keep them a little bit more safe. A virtual hand-to-hand link in the streets. The app is running 99 cents right now and can be found on iPhone and Android devices. It has 4.6 stars on the Google Play Store and 5 stars on the iTunes Store. It appears to be a solid app. I downloaded the app, but I haven't added anybody to my group yet. Over the next few weeks, I'll be talking to my family and friends about downloading the app themselves and having our own group in my area to help each other out. I really think this one is worth your time, much more so than other apps like Peacekeeper. And another app you may find useful that was sent to me by a listener of this show, Melissa. If you're serious about remaining anonymous on the internet, this is one that you need to check out. Apparently, the new way to find out who you are online is called behavioral biometrics, including the gathering of unique keystroke characteristics. So far, several banking websites appear to be using keystroke profiling to perform an additional layer of authentication on site users. In theory, such an approach could also allow the sites to detect account hijackings, even when the attacker enters the correct username and password. If banks and other sites can use this technique to create reliable and accurate profiles of customers, it stands to reason that governments around the world can and do profile people of interest. If you're at all concerned about this, and you probably should be if you're doing anything on Tor or other such services, then you need to check out the keyboard privacy plugin for the Chrome browser. Since Tor is Firefox-based, this specific app won't help you there, but it can help elsewhere. And I would imagine that eventually Firefox will come out with a similar plugin. It's certainly worth giving it a look anyway. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half wild short hairs. Well, that's another thing altogether. Being a cat herder is probably about the toughest thing I think I've ever done. The second annual Free Coast Festival is coming up this month on September 17th through 20th in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I was really hoping that Jess and I would be able to attend this one, but with my new job, we just couldn't make it happen. I do know a couple of my listeners that already have their tickets and are going, and I'm sure they're going to have a fantastic time. I'm just a tad bit jealous, though. The Free Coast Festival is an opportunity for the New Hampshire local liberty community to come together and for prospective Free State project movers to see what life is really like on New Hampshire's seacoast. They will be having a pub crawl, a cruise, events for children, a bus tour, and all sorts of great panels for homeschoolers, entrepreneurs, and even people considering running for political office. You can find out all about it at freecoast.org slash festival.
And speaking of New Hampshire, Jess and I have both signed the Free State Project Pledge in the last couple of months, which now has over 17,000 of the needed 20,000 signers to trigger the move. At the rate they're going, they will have all the signatures they need in just a couple of years, which will then give signers like me five years to make the move to New Hampshire. I hope all of you will consider checking out the Free Coast Festival and the many other great events that the Free State Project has to offer. Thank you for listening to the show this week. As always, I need to thank my heart and soul, Jessica, for her help with this show, and Sheltered Life for allowing me to use their music. For the show notes to this episode, where I put links and other information that's been on this show, go to thelavaflow.com slash 19. And I have a new iTunes review again this week. Green in One said, Loving the Lava Flow. This is a great show. I would like to hear some more interviews or a co-host so you can spend more time discussing some of these stories. Thank you, Mr. Paxton. Keep up the great work. Thanks so much, Green and One. Last week, if you all recall, I asked for some specific feedback about the show, and I got a lot of feedback. Thank you so much for everybody who took the time to let me know your thoughts. It was a huge help. And finally, if you like what this show gives you, and you want more of it, and to keep this show ad-free, Exercise your free market muscles by going to thelavaflow.com slash support and giving a per episode donation of as little as a buck an episode using Patreon or Bitcoin. There are monthly costs associated with doing this show and I need additional equipment to continue making this show better for you every single episode. I'm sitting pretty right now at 33.5%, more than one third of the way towards bringing you more content. Help me get closer to my first goal by going to thelavaflow.com slash support. Until next time, keep striking the root. Thank you for listening to The Lava Flow at thelavaflow.com. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe now at thelavaflow.com forward slash subscribe. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.